Hi everyone, it's Dr. Fam again. Today we're going to do another series brought to you by FamUrology.com. Today we're going to talk about enuresis or bedwet. Well, before we talk about the mechanism, let's just draw out our regular anatomy. So normally you have your kidneys here. And then you have your bladder. And then you have your pee channel. Normally how it works is blood gets filtered to the kidneys. The kidneys then make urine, which carries the waste, and it goes down into the bladder. If our kidneys are unable to filter the waste, we will be bloated. The bladder then fills up once it reaches a certain size, and for every patient, the bladder size is a little bit different. It sends a signal to the spine. Let's just draw our spine right here. And then this is our brain. And then from the spine, it will send another signal back to the bladder that will tell it to squeeze. And then another signal that will tell the pee channel to open. Then urine will come out. However, as we get potty trained, we know that we're no longer wearing diaper and it's not appropriate to use the bathroom while we're in a classroom. So a signal from on top of our brain will then send a signal down here when we need to urinate to stop it so that we can adequately go find the bathroom and relieve ourselves. However, sometimes this maturation mechanism has not fully occurred and that's what leads to sudden urgency and accidents. Usually daytime continence or daytime dryness will occur before nighttime. However, at some point, everybody will be dry. Now, for some kids, it may take a little bit longer because there's no magic medication that can increase the process to achieve daytime continence as well as nighttime continence. There are certain things we can do, certainly, to try to help it. One of the things would be make sure we don't have constipation. So our rectum sits right behind the bladder. And there's, not, <clears throat> there's a lot of nerves that are separated between the bladder and the rectum. If the rectal vault is full, it can cause an increased pressure on the nerve, which then can cause dysfunction of the voiding loop. So it's important to make sure that Constipation is under control. Usually we do fiber or Miralax to make sure that the child has bowel movement at least once a day that's soft. Now the other thing we do is at age five or above, I will do a renal ultrasound to make sure there's no underlying anatomical issues that may be causing any of these. If we do the ultrasound and there's no issues at all, then typically we may work up the bladder with a specific test called a urodynamic study. And what that test does is, it's a test that is done awake, a little catheter is placed, and we fill up the bladder. And from there, we can figure out the mechanics of the bladder to see is it overworking, is it underworking. And usually that test will help dictate where the medication is started. However, conservative management for this would be to make sure that the child does not hold the urine. So every two or three hours, I would make sure the child goes to the bathroom. Number two, like previously said, in terms of the constipation, I would make sure the constipation is under control. Number three, two thirds of the fluid that the child takes, make sure they take it in the early morning and early afternoon and only drink when he gets home or when she gets home as needed. And then prior to going to bedtime, make sure that the child pees and empties out the bladder completely. Because unless the maturation process has occurred, sometimes the child will not be awakened to go to the bathroom. So this is a general overview of normal micturation or urination loop. If you feel your child has an issue with nighttime incontinence or daytime or urgency, log on to our website at famurology.com. Send us a note or come see us, give us a call. We'll be more than happy to take care of your child's needs.